Hello students and welcome back to bankexamstudy.com. So today I'm going to do a very important chapter, a very important topic, the depositories in India. So this topic is really important for the security market awareness as well as for that financial awareness sections. So my name is Ramandeep Singh. I hope you know me. Uh, let's start. Uh, let's start with a brief history. So there was a time when companies used to issue share certificates. Uh, before the digital era right now everything is digital but uh, before 1996 in 1990s and 1980s uh, the shares were transacted via share certificates so the investors were supposed to keep the certificate safe and forward it to buyer once it is sold so uh, there was no you know there, there was no proper records actually uh, no digital records there were physical records but there were no proper digital records you need to keep those share certificates with you but with the introduction of depositories act 1996 now there is no paperwork paperwork involved now people 99.9 percent .9%, i mean i'm not making this data myself i mean it's from sebi 99.9% .9 of that investors they have converted their physical share certificate to the DMAT form, dematerialized form. 99.9% uh, physical share certificate holders or the investors they you know uh, converted their share certificates uh, which were in the form of physical share certificate into the dematerialized form and this process is known as dematerialization are you getting it this process is known as dematerialization so there is no paperwork involved and this procedure is done electronically what is the procedure i'm going to tell you in the next slide so the introduction of depository system also gave rise to the new type of stock trade called dematerialization which i have already told you this process is known as dematerialization nowadays if you want to buy a share there is no need of share certificate uh, you can open an account with a dp i'm going to explain what is a dp and what is a depository uh, let me just explain that first so what is a depository uh, before that this is the process that you need to understand this is the most important slide of this whole lecture i mean see uh there are two depositories in india so whenever uh, you open an account with any depository participant or a dp let it be zeroda let it be sbi securities let it be hdfc securities uh, as an investor you open an account with these zeroda sbi securities or whatever right i mean icici securities are there many other you know uh, there are odd uh, 1000 dps are there in india and these dps they need to you know register themselves either with NS, uh, ndsl or cdsl are you getting it there are just two depositories in india ndsl and cdsl and all the depository participants or the dps they need to register themselves with the see either cdsl or ndsl and investors themselves cannot go directly to the depositories they need to go to the depository participants and the depository participants they have the ledger accounts with the depositories are you getting it so suppose uh, right now i have in my account with zerodha and sba securities and both of them i'm not sure i think both of them are uh, from cdsl right if if both of them are C i'm not sure about it if both of them, uh, them are from cdsl there are other you know uh, dps we call depository participants we call them the dp dp is a short form i mean that can be a, a question in that uh, paper sbi cap security it is a dp uh, what is the full form of dp it is depository participant uh, cdsl and ndsl these are two depositories and all the companies with whom you open and dmat account all those are dps depository participant and you are an investor so this is the simple process uh, and SEBI uh, is actually, you know, overviewing and monitoring the uh, even depositories and depository participants. So what is a depository? A depository, let it be uh, the CDSL or NDSL. 
इज एन ऑर्गेनाइजेशन विच होल्ड अ सिक्योरिटी आई मीन दे मेंटेन द रिकॉर्ड लाइक शेयर्स डिपेंचर्स बॉन्ड गवर्नमेंट सिक्योरिटी म्यूचुअल फंड यूनिट्स ऑफ इन्वेस्टर्स इन इलेक्ट्रॉनिक फॉर्म एट द रिक्वेस्ट ऑफ इन्वेस्टर्स थ्रू रजिस्टर्ड डिपोजिटरी पार्टिसिपेंट आई यू गेटिंग इट सो डिपोजिटरी दे आर एक्चुअली होल्डिंग द शेयर्स डिबेंचर्स बॉन्ड एंड गवर्नमेंट सिक्योरिटी ऑल द म्यूचुअल फंड यूनिट्स विद दैम इन इलेक्ट्रॉनिक फॉर्म एट right uh, you register yourself with the depository participants right you register yourself with the depository participant and you buy shares you buy mutual funds you buy uh, you know uh, government bonds you invest in ipos through depository participants but uh, the records are not, are maintained with the cdsl and ndsl these depository participants are registered with cdsl and ndsl right and they actually hold your uh, you know securities and they hold your uh, debentures bonds and government securities and there is a number to every investment uh, i am going to ex explain that in that uh, you know next slides so this is the process there are two depository the full form of N nsdl this is not ndsl this is nsdl sorry for that this is nsdl this is not ndsl nsdl this is nsdl this is not ndsl this is nsdl sorry for that so uh, national securities depository limited this is nsdl and cdsl uh, central depository services limited uh, please remember the full form central depository services limited and national securities depository limited although uh, most of the investors and even the you know dp employees they don't even know the full form of N cdsl uh, nsdl but you should know because it can be there in the exams so there are just two depositories with uh, who are registered with uh, sebi while there are odd 1000 around 1000 you know depository participants who are registered with these two uh, you know depositories so who can be a dp any uh, public financial institution uh, let's say uh, any commercial bank hdfc bank limited icici or sbi most of them are having you know are are actually a dp uh one i know yes bank uh, i think they are not doing it actively but most of the banks they are a dp so they need a uh, approval of rbi so other financial state financial corporation custodian stock brokers clearing corporations uh, clearing house for for example there is angel broking there is like moti laloons wall so they are not commercial banks or you know financial public financial institutions but uh, still uh they they actually comply with that requirement prescribed by sebi for that uh, depositories one important point is that they should have a minimum net worth of rupees 100 crores that, that is important for this uh, these depositories that's a requirement uh, what is an isin so how the depositories maintain the record so maintaining such huge record is actually difficult for them so there is isin international security identification number so every month so if you are a regular trader or an investor for example i sometimes i invest in stocks uh every month the dps are you know it is mandatory for the dps to uh, send you the transactional statement uh via email via email they need to send you the transactional statement monthly transaction statement in that statement if you watch it closely if you get an opportunity to read that uh for every investment there is a 12 digit uh, this is actually important what is isin this is a 12 digit alpha numeric identification number allotted for every security transaction right for a security so for example this one so equity fully paid equity partly paid equity with the differential voting rights issue by the same issuer will have a different isin so every investment there will be a different isin whatever the investments you are making you will get a different uh, isin number right so this is international securities identification number if you watch if you check your monthly transaction summary you will get isin numbers to all the investments let it be mutual funds let it be uh you know um, let it be mutual fund let it be stocks let it be bonds and all right let it be debentures so this is known as the isin 
सो हु आर द रजिस्ट्रार आर द म्यूचुअल फंड एजेंट्स सो इन माई नेक्स्ट स्लाइड नेक्स्ट लेक्चर आई एम गोइंग टू डिस्कस द म्यूचुअल फंड सो यू कैन आई थिंक दैट इज आई हैव ऑलरेडी अपलोडेड द म्यूचुअल फंड प्लीज चेक द म्यूचुअल फंड लेक्चर इन विच आई हैव मैंशनड आई हैव एक्सप्लेन द रजिस्ट्रार एंड द ट्रांसफर एजेंट्स फॉर एग्जाम्पल इफ यू वॉन्ट टू बाय अ म्यूचुअल फंड सपोज यू आर एन इन्वेस्टर यू आर एन इन्वेस्टर यू विल गो टू एन ए एम सी एसेट मैनेजमेंट कंपनी हु टेक्स यूर मनी एंड हु एक्चुअली मैनेज इट हु मैनेज इज इट राइट देर एग्जाम्पल्स ऑफ ए एम सी इज आर लेट्स एच डी एफ सी एसेट्स आर देयर एंड देन कोटक इज देयर एंड देन मेरा म्यूचुअल फंड इज देयर टाटा इज देयर एल एन टी इज देर आर एक्चुअली अर लॉट एल एन टी अलॉट ऑफ दम इन्वेस्को एंड ऑल एंड दीज ए एम सीज आर यू नो रजिस्टर दे रजिस्टर दम सेल्फ विद रजिस्टर और ट्रांसफर एजेंट्स देर आर राइट नाउ देर आर टू एजेंट्स लाइक वन इज कैम्स एंड द सेकेंड वन इज कारवी सो दीज ए एम सी दे नीड टू रजिस्टर विद एदर विद कैम्स और विद कारवी सो रजिस्टर आर और ट्रांसफर एजेंट्स आर द ट्रस्ट और द इंस्टीट्यूशन Uh, that registers and maintain the detailed records of the transaction of the uh, investors for the conveyance of the mutual fund houses so uh, you know amcs they are doing the marketing right amcs they are managing the money but these uh, you know registrar and transfer agents their job is to you know maintain the records the investor cannot uh, you know Uh, further these cams and carvi they have their own mobile application their online platform where you can directly you know log in and you can make your investments uh, into various amcs yes uh, as an investor you can directly make an account uh, you know create an account with cams or with carvi right uh, they provide the investor services as well so for the detailed lecture go to the mutual fund chapter dematerialization i have already told you Uh, when the physical share certificate they are converted in uh, into the materialized form this process is known as dematerialization this process is not compulsory rematerialization is converting uh, from de uh, you know materialized form to the physical form that this process is known as materialization who is a registered owner of security asli malik kahan that is really important who is actual actual on owner of that uh, you know shares that you have purchased in the books of uh, and nsdl or the cdsl in the books of cdsl uh, if you have you know made your purchases uh, using your dp uh, dp services for example you made purchases using the zerodha or sb security services in the cdsl or ndsl's account there will be the name of the dp dp is the actual owner in the books of cdsl and ndsl so if somebody you know uh, invest via physical form then the person who actually the actual investor is the owner of the securities in the books of cdsl and ndsl uh, it's actual owner is not the right uh, word registered owner is the right word right he would be the registered owner not the actual actual owner is investor anyhow but uh, in case you have done the investment using the de, uh, dematerialized form registered owner is a dp right so that's really important opening an account with a dp any individual can open an account uh, including the nri but hef cannot open an account with a dp uh, multiple accounts can be opened with various dps as i have account with the hdfc i have account with the idb i have account with the sbi and i have an account with zerodha i want to close <laughs> most of them Uh, but you can have a multiple accounts with the various dps so transactional statement uh, every month the dp is required it is mandatory for the dps to send you the transaction statement so that is important so account closure that one is very important if you want to close your account there can be two cases there are no shares in your account there is nothing in, in your account it is it is it has nothing so you can just fill your account closure form and uh, submit the delivery instruction slip right what is delivery instruction slip that one is important delivery instruction slip i forgot to you know make a proper slide for that so delivery instruction slip uh, is just like a checkbook see there are, there is a lot of similarity between a dp and a bank in the bank you deposit your money 
in dp uh, you you just keep your shares and sometimes even mutual funds right uh in dp right there are check uh, there are delivery instruction books uh, delivery instruction slips with the banks there are checkbooks so delivery instruction slip is a kind of checkbook for shares right so when you want to close your uh, account your dmat account with a dp you need to fill a account closure form and you need to attach the delivery instructions slip in case of there are no shares in your account but if you have some shares in your account and you want to transfer your shares from one dp to another dp for example if you want if i actually in past i wanted to transfer my shares from sbi to hdfc i wanted to do that bahut i mean tang karte hain they don't do it i mean the services of sbi security is actually really bad actually so uh so you need to fill that account closure form right you need to attach the delivery instruction slip in case you have misplaced it you need to fill another form that i have misplaced a slip and you need to sign it and then uh you need to attach a properly stamped cmr copy for example if i want to transfer my shares from sbi to uh, hdfc i need to get a cmr copy client master copy from hdfc properly stamped and i need to submit it to sbi are you getting it so that is the account closure of uh, process so that's all for today students i hope you are able to understand the today's lecture that was quite short and crisp so if there is any doubt in your mind you can ask your doubts in the discussion board or uh, just go to the comment section and comment there so i'll be there for you please like this video and uh, please subscribe this channel that is actually really important for me so that's all for today students thank you and have a very nice day bye